This is Kenneth Copeland's daughter, Terry Copeland Pearsons. She is an evangelical and a televangelist, has a TV show on Kenneth Copeland's network. And she had some things to say about the 2022 midterm elections. Naturally, she didn't like the results. The results were really, really bad for Republicans, particularly for Trump-supporting Christian nationalist Republicans. The results were really bad for them. So listen to what she had to say. November 9th, this is the day after the election took place, 2022. And Lord, for these elections that are remaining, these states that remaining in uh, Congress, Lord, in the House, at Libra, Dashto, and Lord, the third... Is she just speaking nonsense right in the middle of a normal sentence? What was that? In the house at Calibra Dashto. She is. She's just busting out nonsense, okay? And Lord, the 30 something elections that are yet to be called, Lord, I would really appreciate it if she just spoke English the whole time. That would be very nice. Spirit, you know what you learned last week? She sounds like she's speaking Latin, but I'll give you a little spoiler alert here. She's just speaking nonsense. There is no language to it. She believes that God is filling her with the Holy Spirit, and she's speaking in a new, undiscovered language through the power of God. In reality, it's all just garbled garbage. I know that it's complete nonsense and not actually a language because linguists have studied this and come to the conclusion that this is completely made up. There is no sense to it. There's no structure, no grammatical structure of any sort. It's all fabricated nonsense. And on top of that, she claims to be endowed with the spirit of God or the power of God or whatever. And in addition to speaking in tongues, she claims to prophesy from God. She doesn't. Every time she's laid down a prophecy for us, it's failed, which means, wait for it, she doesn't have God's blessing. There's a very specific remedy prescribed in the Bible for people who falsely prophesy, but that's neither here nor there. I don't support that. I'm just saying she should at the very least lose her church for falsely prophesying and lying about speaking in tongues. But keep listening. She's said the word presto like 16 times. She really likes ano as a uh, like a, a suffix on words, doesn't she? That you are a what? Is she insulting somebody right now? This is offensive. And you said, Lord, when you catch a thief, make him pay seven times. Make him pay seven times. Okay, so again, this is election night coverage or the night after the election took place. This is coverage of that event. And now she busts out, when you find a thief, make him pay seven times the amount of what he stole or whatever other thing. Interesting she's going back to the Old Testament for her prescriptions of what people should suffer or the consequences they should face for breaking Old Testament rules, right? I mean, that's neither here nor there. Make him pay seven times. 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 Lord, I call in that number seven, the number of perfection, God's holy number. In the name of Jesus, we call in a stay of a core and a result of holy proportion, a result of holy and godly heavenly proportion. I thank you for angel intervention. Okay, results of a holy proportion. She was expecting, like, good results for Republicans, I guess. If you are watching this five years in the future and are completely unaware of what happened in the 2022 midterms, Republicans suffered terribly. They did not get what they were expecting. When one political party controls the White House, usually, in the following midterms, the other political party takes complete control. It's a wipeout, usually. So in 2018, Donald Trump controlled the White House for his first term, right? 2018 rolls along, 
Democrats take the House and the Senate. That is, it was a blue wave. That was expected. That's how it usually happens. This is Biden's first term, and this is the first midterm after Biden's term started. It was expected that Republicans would take the House and the Senate, and it would be just a total blowout for them. It most definitely did not end the way that they hoped or expected. It was an absolute slaughter for Republicans. Not only was it a slaughter for Republicans, but it was also a complete slaughter for the Trumpist movement, the Christian nationalist movement, and it was a complete win for democracy across the board. Candidates who talked about election fraud and, and you know conspiracies like that lost across the board. Candidates who were endorsed by Donald Trump lost across the board. There were one or two that slipped through, but that could have been chalked up to the fact that they were just the most popular candidate, whether they were endorsed by Trump or not. It did not end well for Republicans. So I find it fascinating that Terry Pearson's, Kenneth Copeland's daughter, is sitting here telling us that things are going to go well. She's praying to God, speaking in tongues. God has filled her with the Holy Spirit and says he's in control. And they failed miserably. Keep listening. Thank you for angel intervention. Angels, angels, Lord, angels, if necessary, removing every, removing every wicked ballot, removing every fraudulent ballot, remove them, bringing them to nothing. Yeah, so the interesting, like, results of this election were, as I said, election deniers lost across the board. Democracy won across the board. But she didn't know that yet. When this came out, she didn't realize how deeply unpopular it was to talk about election fraud and all of that stuff. Pretty much the only group of people talking about election fraud are Trump extremists like her. And Trump is now the minority in the party and has been recognized as such at this immediate moment. We'll see if things change. But right now, election denialism is out of favor right now. But I find it fascinating that she is spreading this conspiracy right up front. She, this was repeated by a bunch of Republicans all through their election night coverage. But at the end of the night, when it was all said and done, people realized how deeply unpopular that is with voters. And it seems like tentatively they're dropping it. That's a win for democracy. But again, she didn't get the message yet. So she's going on about election fraud still. It's kind of embarrassing. Get them to nothing, erase them. They are nothing. They are nothing. They are nothing. They are nothing. You are bringing those to nothing. Lies, deceits, nothing. They come to nothing in Jesus' name. You know what I find really, really weird about this whole situation? These Christian nationalists have spent the last, uh, what, like, Two years, or, or even longer, two and a half, three years, hell, six years, honestly, talking about election fraud and how they're praying for God to end the fraud, right? And then the next election rolls around, and they scream about fraud again. Did God answer your prayers or not? It just shows that they don't even expect God to answer their prayers. What they expect is for God to drop the ball and not help them, not do what they need. They need a fraud-free election. Well, God's not delivering that, despite the fact that millions of Christian nationalists have been begging for it this whole time. Blows me away. It's like they're not using logic at all here. They're not reasoning their way through anything. So that was Kenneth Copeland's daughter, and that was oddly reminiscent of Paula White. If you remember Paula White, she was the strike and strike lady. This video, I have a clip folder on my hard drive. And this video is titled Strike and Strike. It's Paula White Strike and Strike and Strike video. Kind of funny. Anyway, yeah, th you may remember this. This is from 2020. This is the day after the 2020 election, right? Paula White, which is Donald Trump's spiritual advisor, quote unquote. She's a televangelist. Comes out there and says, Strike and strike and strike and strike and strike. And, and she did this for like... I a minute, a minute and a half, just strike and strike and strike and strike. And I, I, I don't know what she thought she was doing. Anyways, halfway through, she called to the angels of Africa to come save the country. Dispatch from Africa right now, Africa right now, Africa right now, from Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here in the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. 
So anyways, yeah, this video from Terry Copeland Pearsons was oddly reminiscent of Paula White calling down angels from Africa and South America to save the election. Like, again, did they not think that it worked? They call like with all the spiritual authority, they believe God has endowed in them and they order angels to come to America from Africa to correct the errors in the election, and they don't seem to believe that it worked? It makes no sense, ideologically. I just don't understand where their heads are at. Anyway, anyway, that's neither here nor there. The next video I wanted to watch is actually George Pearson's. It is Terry Pearson's husband. So Kenneth Copeland's son-in-law is who this is. This is from November 8th, 2022, election night, when he released this clip. Check this out. This afternoon, I'm in the kitchen and I'm fixing something to eat. Pastor Terry and I are talking about the election and just the different things that are happening. And for a moment, I got quiet and I heard the voice of the Lord. And you know I bet. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Because God would talk to this rich dude over here, right? He would deliver a message to this mega rich, ultra conservative, immigrant hating, black hating prosperity gospel loving pastor this is who god would communicate with okay what did god say to you george and do you know what he said watch me work no he said i got this Woo. if you heard in the background his hype man or his buddy or whatever said watch me work the reason he asked that question will become relevant in a second that's what god supposedly told george back in 2022 we're going to watch that video in a minute, but anyway, <laughs> okay. So God didn't say, watch me work this time. He said, I've got this, apparently. Keep listening. This is deeply entertaining to me. I got this. Ooh. I like that. I got I, this. I got this. I'm telling you, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wow, dude. I love this. This is just fantastic, dude. Here's the thing. Democracy won. In this midterm election, okay, democracy won, Trump lost. Some Republicans took office. Ron DeSantis had a win, that's disappointing. Kemp had a win, that's disappointing. So did Abbott. Some of that is disappointing, but you know what? It's not democracy destroying levels right now. And that's fantastic news. We have reason to celebrate today. We will retain our democracy as a country for another day because of what happened on November 8th on election night. So I feel comfortable laughing at these people because I feel like we're not in a tough situation anymore. It's good news. Before we continue, I just wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. Or you can check out my Telltale Unfiltered channel. I go through long-form, unhinged sermons from all kinds of people, from Hank Koneman to Greg Locke to Jehovah's Witnesses. So give it a look. Links are in the description. Okay, now back to the video. Anyway, from left to right here, we've got George Pearsons, who we've been listening to. Then we've got his wife, Terry. She's the son of Kenneth Copeland. Then we've got Gene Bailey. He's the host of Flashpoint. This TV show is on Victory Network. So is Flashpoint. This is owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland, this TV network, I mean. And I think that's Michelle Bachman, who we'll be talking about later. I'm not sure who the other two people are. But anyway, yeah, these are all far-right, extremist, Trump-supporting nutcases who are obsessed with Christian nationalism and being as far right as humanly possible. So keep listening to what old George Pearsons has to say to this little group of people here. Thank you, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we yeah. have worked together between heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord. Two years praying, standing, believing. That's an interesting point. They spent the past two years praying, standing, and believing that Donald Trump, I'm sorry, <laughs> I mean that God, they're, they're different. They're not different in these people's eyes necessarily, but they're not the same thing. That God was going to prevent election fraud from taking place, right? That's what they spent the last two years doing. Okay, what else does old George have to say for us? Praying, standing, believing. We are, as believers, emboldened, empowered, and standing on our authority in the Word of God. This election will not be stolen. No. Corruption, you bow your knee, your name to the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that we've seen in two years 
Jesus himself has rolled up his sleeves and he has worked and his people have worked with him. Right there, he's referencing his old video. Again, we're going to take a look at it from two years ago in just a minute. In every shape, form, and matter. So, Lord, we thank you that this deal is over. It's up. And now we hear your voice. I got this. And we thank you and praise you and honor you for the victory Amen. this night. For the United States of America. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, that's the interesting thing. Victory does not necessarily come if there is no fraud. Victory in the eyes of Republicans. If, there, if God erases fraud entirely, it does not mean you'll win. It means there's no fraud. The 2020 election was actually probably the most secure election in U.S. history. And this election was also extremely secure. Because we expected people to scream about fraud all over again, just like in 2022. They prayed for this election and the last one to be completely secure. And even in the middle of the e election coverage, November 8th, they said they believe this election will be secure. And after the election, they continue to claim there was fraud. They don't even believe the things that they say. This is from November 2020, early November. This is after the election was called for Joe Biden and everybody knew that, or it was right before it maybe, it was, around, it was in that little gray area, right when people weren't super sure who was going to win, but it was leaning Joe Biden. George Pearson comes out and says this. So this is a word from the Lord and he's not happy with what's going on. He's not happy with some of these things that have been decided and he's not happy with the the opposite direction that he wants to go then why didn't he stop it i don't understand is he not all powerful couldn't he just step in and flip the votes himself couldn't he just alter our brains to make us want to vote for donald trump i don't get it is he all powerful or not the ideology they seem to be buying into is one that implies that God is not capable of doing whatever he wants, not capable of electing the leaders that he wants. Bizarrely, we saw this exact same idea coming from another person, uh, Johnny Enlow. The dude is one of the leaders of the Trump religion, not, not just the Trump cult, like people who are obsessed about Trump, but the Trump religion, like... People who love Donald Trump like he's a religious leader. This is the guy. This is one of the main leaders of the, the Trump religion, Johnny Enlow, right? And in 20, I think December 2019, right before the 2020 election, he came out and he said, you know what, I'll let you listen to it. He came out and he said this. Is going to be a hinge of the ages and be known as before Trump and after Trump because of the way I'm going to use him. I'm using wow. him as a Trump card, but I'm the Trump card player. God's speaking to him, telling him this is what he's saying. And so your nation will be known as before Trump and after Trump. And he said, the nations will be known as before Trump, after Trump. And the Lord, it was like, he said, I'm really not interested in your all's vote this time. I'm doing it. I usually give you all that option. This time, I'm not. This is a rescue operation from heaven. If it was a rescue operation from heaven, if it didn't matter how people voted, then why vote at all? And why, after the fact, claim that God is unhappy with how things are going? These are like conflicting, contradictory beliefs simultaneously held by this group of people, by these televangelists, by these prosperity gospel preachers. But the conflicts are irrelevant to them. It doesn't matter. They will continue repeating whatever is convenient in the moment for them. So keep listening to what George Pearsons said two years ago in 2020. God's not happy about the results for some reason, as if he couldn't fix it himself. The direction that he wants to go, where abortion is concerned, where the Supreme Court is concerned, where religious liberty is concerned, where Israel is concerned. And he's saying, watch me work. See, that was a reference from before. Gene Bailey said that to him in the previous video. Yes, amen. Lord, we're going to see you yes, work in this. We are. We're
Uh oh, now he's praying, I think, or something. We're gonna see you work in the midst of this. Thank you. And we invoke the name of Jesus. Yeah. And and how'd that go for you, George? Did it work? Did it do what you were hoping it would do? Yeah. And take authority over the powers and the principalities and the spirit of communism that is trying to infiltrate, overtake, and attack this nation right now. Communism. Wow. That's weird, because I thought for sure that Jesus was at least a little socialist, right? You bow your knee to the name of the Lord Jesus. You hear the voice of the Lord through this man of God. You have no authority in this. Watch me work. Okay, and again, how did that work out for you, George? <laughs> This is like deeply entertaining to me. I'm just eating this up right now. That isn't the only weird, bizarre thing that George Pearson's did after the 2020 election, though, dude. This guy is one of the biggest conspiracy repeaters out there as a televangelist. This one was from late November 2021. This is when we knew Biden had won the election. I saw this picture. Of the people in the ballots. Okay, I think this is people counting ballots is what he's looking at. And what my eye was drawn to was the tables. The tables. Okay. And what the Lord started to talk to me about was he went through and he overturned the tables. What are on those tables? Ballots ballots. And what I could see was he was walking up and down those aisles and he started turning over the tables. The tables are being turned over. Those tables are being turned over. Okay. So God's just, I guess what he's saying is he's, God's disregarding democracy in the United States. He's erasing it. He doesn't care about it. Doesn't want anything to do with it. Right. Is what it sounds like he's saying. God wants to take control in a fascist dictatorship rather than allowing humans to count it. Kind of like Johnny Enlow said, I'm really not interested in your opinion. I'm doing it. Usually I give you guys that option. This time I'm appointing the person that I want to be the president. Isn't that what Enlow said? The tables are being turned over. And he came to a table and he turned it over. Wow. Wow, what a strong guy to have flipped a table over, huh? Whew. That scared me for a minute. Table, and he turned it over. With papers on it, too. Uh, nothing on the papers, just blank sheets of paper. Why did he even have that there? Was it just for the demonstration? To the Lord. Like people are standing and clapping like wild over this. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Enough! 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 And and how did that work out for you, George? How did it go? Did you get your guy in office like you wanted? Did you succeed in overturning democracy? The scary thing is they came pretty close, but they did eventually fail to overturn democracy. And lucky for us, it seems like democracy was on the ballot this midterm election, and it won. Democracy won. Republicans took the House. Democracy won the election. That's what it looks like right now tentatively. In five years, I may be eating my own words, but it's a time to celebrate. So that's fantastic news. And I can't get enough of these televangelists just losing their minds at what happened. It, it's just fantastic. Let me know what you think in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist.